Hello, my name is Annie Murphy Springer. Actually, it takes about three minutes to tell my whole name, which is Ann Mary Catherine Bridget Teresa Murphy Springer. Um, unlike some of my colleagues here, I did not begin painting until I was in my 60s. That was a long time ago. And um, I believed my third grade teacher for about 50, 60 years who said I could never, ever do any art. <laughs> Eventually, a friend said, you're going to paint. Come on, let's go painting. And I began. Um, actually, people who are collecting my art give me sort of consistent feedback. People always talk about the color, uh, exuberance, um, the freshness. The, these are the kinds of words that I hear all the time, and especially whimsy. And uh, I enjoy whimsy. I live next to a 3,000 acre sheep ranch in Bodega. They are my neighbors. This is what I see from my studio. This is called Redwood Rest. And they are sitting out there at sunset every evening. I love my sheep. But these I'm training actually to fly. And three of them are doing quite well. So the whimsy is in a lot of my paintings. I also enjoy um, actually plain air painting. I do most of my painting plein air and enjoy it a lot. Of course, there is such inspiration around here, the sensuality of the hills and the beauty. Um, I live up off of Joy Road in Bodega, so if any of you know that area, it is just exquisitely beautiful, all seasons of the year, and I love painting them. Um, I really like plein air painting for many reasons, many of which have been mentioned by our, our other artists. But once in a while, it's a real challenge. I was out on the Laguna painting one day at sunset, and there was a wonderful old twisted oak. You know how they look? They're all kind of like this. And one side was golden, and one side was purple. And all of a sudden, this voice behind me yelled, that tree's not purple? Scared the hell out of me. And I turned around, and I said, well, it is now. And she went, oh, and ran away. So <laughs> once in a while, you have that kind of thing happen. Um, the things that I'm enjoying now, I'm experimenting a lot now. Of, obviously, I'm painting watercolor on paper, but I'm also doing watercolor on canvas, which is very challenging and fun and interesting. And I started doing paintings on clayboard, which I think is a little bit unusual. And the most interesting thing I'm doing right now is watercolor on sandpaper, which is a trip because you get all the little reflections of the little tiny pieces of, of sand reflecting up, and it makes a really beautiful, beautiful effect. I'm enjoying that a lot. Um, I'm also self-taught. I've never had any real formal training. Uh, I've attended a lot of workshops and classes, but I've taught myself uh, so many things about color and perspective and composition by trial and error that uh, a couple of years ago I was asked to teach a class at Riley Street, which I, I did, and now one of the great joys of my life is teaching watercolor and turning people on to just the, the wonders of it. In fact, I call my class the wonders of watercolor. Wow, W-O-W. -W. And uh, people seem to get it, that you don't need to have a lot of formality in your life with, with your painting. You can actually begin painting and learn painting and create wonderful little vignettes of painting in a, in a short class even. Um, I have a website. Being a techno dummy, this is amazing to everyone who knows me that I have a website, www.anniemurphyspringer, all one word, dot com. Dot, yes, dot com. And um, one of the other things I wanted to share with you was a, a, an incident at, um, up at Goat Rock talking about plein air painting. This was a rather extraordinary circumstance. A, a group of us called the Monday Morning Painters went up to Goat Rock. And as we got there, it had been clear all the way up the coast, beautiful, sunny, clear. We got there and the fog had dropped in. It was so thick, you couldn't see literally 10 or 15 feet. It was just very, very thick, wet fog. 
Well, I decided I hadn't driven up there for any for nothing. I was going to set up anyway in hopes that the fog would lift. And there were two other women, and I chose a spot up on a bluff, and we set up everything. And Miss Comfort Bottom here, I had my umbrella and I had my everything all laid out and tucked in my little chair. And all of a sudden, there was a voice behind me, and this voice said, "May I take your picture?" And we turned around and said, "Well, sure." And he said. I've just got to take this picture. He did, and then he asked for a name, and I said, just send it to Annie and Bodega, it will get to me. And about a month later, a letter came with these pictures of the three of us in this dense, thick fog, plain air painting. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm from Ohio. No one in Ohio would believe that in California, people sit in a dense fog painting something they cannot see. <laughs> so I sent him the painting, which of course was a fantasy. I had never seen Goat Rock, still haven't, it's always been foggy. And we started this correspondence, and I'll end the story by saying, much to my horror, about the third or fourth letter that he sent, he said that he had been the state director of art education for the state of Ohio, and he loved the painting. <laughs> so that's my, my famous plein air, in the fog, with nothing to see painting. But it was fun. Thank you very much.